And welcome to Off the Press, the newspaper review program. We'll take a look at the national dailies. We'll try to make sense of it. We'll dissect it as much as we can and as much as time will allow us. And we'll leave you to get the rest for yourself. I won't be alone doing this this morning. I'll be joined virtually by Aisha Yesufu, the co-convener of Brimbak Agas. Good to have you, Aisha. It's always a pleasure to be here with you, Amaka. Thank all you so right. much for having me. Thank you for joining in all the way from Scotland. Now, we have a couple of papers, but we will begin with uh, the Daily Trust uh, newspaper already displayed. Thank you to our production guys. And it says, COVID-19, how ATMs pose risk to bank customers? I'm just wondering if we realize this just now, but the story is on page three of the nation's, uh, of the Daily Trust newspaper. And we have, um, there's something on Chibok school girls were um, abducted. Since Chibok school girls uh, were abducted, yeah, what has happened so far? The, it is 200, 2,308 days, actually, since Chibok school girls were abducted. Aisha, I'm sure you have a lot to say when we come to that. Uh, we also have international flights to resume in weeks, according to the federal government. So many people are excited, I can only imagine. Two speakers emerge as Edo assembly crisis deepens on page 29. And a big story, 33 killed yet again in fresh southern Kaduna attacks. Uh, gunmen kill four in Bielsa Church. Casino youth protest insecurity. 19 states in Nigeria unsafe, the UK tells nationals. 19 states. Uh, we are aware of Al-Qaeda infiltration. That's from our defense headquarters there. On page 6, recent killings in southern Kaduna. That's a very... Uh, powerful representation there by Daily Trust. You can see for yourself um, how it has increased. Um, you can see the graph representation there. Night die in Sokoto boats mishap on page seven. Kakovit distributes 23 billion naira palliatives to 10 million Nigerians. Really? That story is on page 17. 23 billion naira uh, palliatives to 10 million Nigerians. Okay, violence as INEC threatens to stop Edo and Undo uh, Gober elections. That story is on page 34 of the Daily Trust newspaper. Aisha, some very, very interesting headlines there. I'm wondering where do you want to begin from? Uh, where I would like to begin from uh, is uh, with the Chiba girls, the countdown. It's the Daily Trust, they have a countdown, the daily countdown they've been doing since 2014 and uh, for mm. me it's so it's so commendable they've not they've not forgotten the issue of the chibok girls they keep it on the front runner they keep it on the, uh, the on the front page mm. uh, to, uh, we have uh, 112 chibok girls still in captivity 107 were brought back and recently we've seen the families have cried out that the children have been neglected the girls have been neglected in school they have not been allowed to mingle they're still writing the same exam preparing for the same exam they were supposed to write. Some of them, out of frustration, have, have left the, the system, the, the school system, because they are not allowed to mingle with their uh, schoolmates and, 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 and all of that. So it's really quite sad. But you know, the thing for me that it's most, uh, most uh, how do I put it? I don't know whether to call it sad or to, to say, let me just say, the fact that there are people who, up to today, just before I came on here, I was I was on Twitter and there was this, you know, people who insulted us, who abused us, who attacked us in 2014 for cry, for saying for talking for standing for the Chibok girls, for talking about the insurgency. Today they're still doing that. Somebody was asking, Oh, you were paid for BBOG. It was monetized and everything. Mm. For them, they think before anybody can bring out their uh, effort, it has to do with payment. And this same person, ironically, now is talking about the Southern Kaduna killings. He's making demands for the Southern Kaduna killings. And you're wondering, this same Southern Kaduna killings, we talked about it in 2014, but because of his administration bias, he was in love with the government, then he was a psychopath that. He forgot that lives matter more than your love uh, for government. Today, if you look at the, the front page, there, it's killings, 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 killings again mm -hmm. in, in, in Southern Kaduna. Massacre is going on in Southern Kaduna. People are being, are, are being killed, are being wiped out. 
the, the uh, messages were sent to people in Salvador Kaduna that this bandit they said they were coming, and within 24 hours they were actually there. And yet citizens are focused more on for those who, for them today, they are in love with this administration. They have their administration bias today. They are not talking, talking about the killings in Salvador Kaduna. They are actually attacking us for even talking about them. Now you have those who, who used to attack us. Mm -hmm. They are now making demands and, you know, the, the attacks still go on. It's, it's really sad the way people don't understand that we are all victims waiting to happen. And in Nigeria, unfortunately, uh, being a victim is no longer a matter of if, it is a matter of where. Because we have a government who that is incapable, that, 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 that is so clueless, that is such a failure, that is incompetent, and is refusing to do what it's supposed to do. We see there where, uh, is it... Uh, DHQ that I say that we are aware of Al Qaeda infiltration. Uh, so they are aware of Al Qaeda's infiltration. What have they done about it? They are not paid to just be aware. They are they're there to they're supposed to be aware, they're supposed to do something about it, they're supposed to stop it. And we are dealing with it so much already, all this killing. I mean, months years ago, all of this was uh, being told to that. I remember this uh, young man called uh, as a Kida whom the military, instead of working with him, he started telling us, like, look, in the Northwest, these people are moving to the Northwest and everything. But what happened? The military went after him. They labeled him a terrorist. They put mm. his life so much in, the, in danger. They called him unpredictable. They, they arrested him and all of that. This is not fair. Nigeria's, the Nigerian government should go after terrorists and not after citizens who, 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 are, who haven't done anything to them. And you know, this case is so, it's, it's, it's so, it's so pathetic. You see what they said, there are 19 states in Nigeria on safe mm -hmm. UK test national. How, do, how, do, how are we going to do business with, with, with that, uh, with this kind of uh, figures uh, uh, being thrown out there? People are dying every day. Just look at this front page alone. It's death, death, death that you see all over the page. I, 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 and it's just, it's, it's just really sad, actually. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's just sad. I mean, just just before you go to your next thought on that paper, I, I I don't know how we feel as Nigerians when you know we get international community warning us and saying, look, you have a danger looming, and uh, we don't necessarily see it before they see it. I'm just saying that in reference to you know what the UK is saying. Of course, warning its own nationals, and of course, again, it was yesterday or two days ago that the US also warned of this infiltration from Al Qaeda. I don't know where we are headed, but it seems like something needs to be urgently done. And to whom shall that be directed becomes the most important question to you know, answer at this stage. I, I think the thing is that we, they say we always have lots of motion, but no movement. We, we, we head nowhere. We, we just go round and round in circles. And most of the times when these things are being told to us, we are always in denial. We, this is not the first time, even before Boko Haram started in Nigeria, when we have all of these countries warning us about the issue of Boko Haram, about the potential of suicide bombing. I remember uh, a, a minister then, I think, uh, of late memory, she was like, oh, Nigerians can't, uh, we wouldn't do suicide bombing or something like that. I can't remember the exact way in which she said. And I remember then I used to argue with Nigeria, like, a lot of people are like, have you seen, have you ever seen the Alma jury system? Have you seen people who don't have any hope in life? They have been, they have been treated so unfairly. The society has always been bad uh, with them. They have right. no empathy. I grew up in a place in Kano called Panahu. It's, it's the ghetto. I, I call it the Ajegule of Kano. And in that place, yeah. as a child growing up and as a young teenager, a lot of teenagers and who they would come and borrow money against the next riot. Somebody will come at me to, please, can you give me 300 naira when the next riot come, I will pay you. There were people who lived for a riot. That's the only way they get money. They don't, they've not gone to school. They haven't gotten Islamic teaching. They were sent to do al -Majri. They ended up not doing it. They don't have any trade. They, you don't see them and they are treated as a threat of society until they hold a weapon. And that's when they are, people look at them with fear. But yet, Nigeria, we always are in denial about things that are happening. And then at the end, at the end of the day, it wasn't. And then we just keep just waiting, praying that everything will blow over, just we have right now. 
all of this is security. People are praying that it, it will blow over. And they forget that God will not do for us what he has given us the capacity to, to do for ourselves. Mm. All right. Thank you very much, Aisha, for that intervention. Um, we would go to the next paper. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> and the next paper is going to be Tribune. Uh, COVID-19, federal government in process to reopen international flights, extends phase two, is locked down by four weeks. That story is on page six. Again, the matter. 22 feared uh, killed in fresh southern Kaduna attack in, on page 26. Family demands CCTV footage of U.S. students' death in soap factory. Oyo begins investigation. That's a rightful demand to make indeed. The story is on page 27. A car COVID flags of 23 billion naira food palliatives distribution for 10 million Nigerians. The, the story is on page 4. Um, Bauchi governor appoints special assistant on unmarried women affairs. Really? On page 36, all right, Social Investment Fund, Reps Simon Adi Oshun, Ahmed and Farouk and others over 1.7 trillion naira allocation. Battle for Speaker Rafun's Edo governorship race on page 3. Uh, we also have, you can see picture story from all of that uh, that happened yesterday from Edo State. Gunmen killed pregnant woman and husband and two others in Bayelsa. Page 27, like Aisha said, it's all killings and killings. I look forward to the day that we'll come here and have a different kind of conversation. Prepare for, um, prepare for protracted resistance against illegal, illegally revived water bill. That's SMBLF telling Nigerians. And then we have police intercept 40-foot container filled with tramadol and codeine in Lagos. The story is on page 6. Uh, don't treat U.S. alert on Al-Qaeda with levity, Middle Belt Forum tells the federal government. Buhari should seize opportunity to rejig the military, according to Adebanjo there. And government should ban uh, open grazing, encourage state police, uh, Chekwa is saying on page 27. And armed forces are on top is on top of the situation, is on top of the situation. You know that line, we are very familiar with it. That's coming from the defense headquarters. Aisha, let me hand over to you now. Uh, like you did say, of course, the killings, killings, uh, the, the news of the killings still uh, continue here. Uh, but I just look at this this one of, uh, we saw it earlier on, uh, of the 23 billion, yeah, no. right? Yeah, that correct. the federal government is uh, sharing to 10 million families. Kakovid. Yes, the Kakovid. Uh, 23 billion to 10 million families is 2,300 naira per family, if I have my master correct. You know, these figures, we hear them, 23 billion, and then we are all over. What is 2,300 going to do in this present day Nigeria? How many cups of rice is that, really? A bag of rice is uh, 20, it's almost 30,000 naira. And then we are having 23, you know, when they say this 23 billion, this 10, you never, sometimes you never see this 10 million families. You look around you, you look at, you ask people who are around that you know, has anybody received this thing? Even the people who are working with, around you, with you, you never see people who, who have received this amount, but then yet all of this billion. So let's, let's be specific about this, this particular uh, amount and not be carried away. And, and who are uh, these Nigerians that are getting these palliatives? Who are these Nigerians getting Yeah, that? who are these Nigerians? For example, we were hearing of 500 million uh, naira that, has, that was used to feed our school children uh, 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 by the federal government. And I want, during the uh, lockdown, and I'm wondering who are these people who receive this, uh, this food? Because I, well, maybe because I don't have kids of school age uh, anymore, so I definitely know they didn't come to my doorstep. But who are those people? These are questions that we need to keep asking. These are our money. So when people are going out and making demands on fellow citizens, oh, they will send you tests one million times. You tell them to go out and send tests to their government, which is by going out for protests. They won't do it. And they sit down. People sit down there and looting their money. They don't do anything about it. And then they come and put the body on fellow uh, citizens. It's really, it's, it's really quite pathetic. I think it is high time Nigerians begin to hold their government accountable. And it is not the burden of being stopped for, for, for government uh, shouldn't fall, fall on, on, on citizens. Mm. And then the, of course, the big one there is the battle for speaker, weapons, and no governorship race. I, I'm like, as, as an Edo woman, I will officially say we are crazy. You know, <laughs> I just say the people that, people when they talk, say they mad. And I don't argue with them. It's, it's just unbelievable what is happening in Edo state. And you know, see, looking at the wolf, 
roof being taken off, I mean, sand being dumped mm. at the complex is just so unbelievable. It's just so that at the end of the day, what we have in our political space are charlatans, and we need to do away with them. We need to get people with character. We need to get people with competence. We need to get people with capacity in our political space. Otherwise, we will continue to count and talk about the bad governance uh, that, 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 that is happening uh, in, in, our, in, our, in our state. Mm -hmm. And it's it really uh, sad. I see a top one there, you know, where they say family demands to be put it on yeah. blue eyes to be in soap uh, factory and oil gives uh, investigation. I mean, honestly, whatever happens uh, in our country, especially accidents, especially murder, especially killings, we, they, more, they should be investigation. We should ensure that something comes out of it so that another person does not become a victim. That's how you grow. That's how countries grow. That's how countries make progress. But in our own case, things just go on. And at the end of the day, we just do nothing about it. And then another victim is just waiting to happen. Like I said before, it's a wish. Being a victim is not a matter of uh, when and no longer a matter of uh, of, of ill. Happen. And so this is really quite uh, really quite sad. And then the issue of police intercept 40 foot container filled with trauma door coding in Lagos is quite sad because we really have an issue of drug abuse uh, in, in the country. A lot of children, a lot of women are, 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 are addicted to this, this, especially in the north where we have uh, lot, lots of women, housewives being addicted, and it all comes from the fact that, you know, people will refuse to take note of things. We are always arguing. People feel uh, uh, bad. Oh, why? I remember at one time, you know, people in the north will say, why are you saying northerners do drugs? I gave an example of where I grew up, and I said over 70 to 80 percent of the youth then were into drugs, and it's only by the grace of God we didn't go into, into drugs. And, and all of that, people would argue. I think it is time for us as citizens to always take a correction when people point out our ills to us. It's just like I'm from Edo State. When mm. you're talking of, about uh, trafficking, uh, human trafficking, and sex workers in Italy, most of them coming from Edo State, I would argue with you. It's a fact. The only thing I'm going to do as an Edo woman is to keep talking about it, keep, work, uh, keep uh, ensuring that we, we talk a, 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 a about it against and, and as much as possible, enlighten people on the wrong of doing that. And I think as, the, as a nation as a whole, we need to keep doing that. Right. Aisha, let's go to the nation newspaper uh, in the interest of time uh, before they, they put it up. I believe they would. I mean, it's really sad. That insight that you gave when you talked about women uh, who, you know, abuse drugs. And then we see on the National Daily that we have, uh, you know, containers of this kind of thing is indeed worrying. And the nation newspaper is already displayed. Uh, Lagos issues strict code for worship centers for the CIS guidelines listed on page uh, six. I think today, yes, today there will be, the, the mosque will be open today. And then on Sunday, the churches would resume. Now, Kakovit, again, you know, the story we've mentioned, we've talked about that, we'll move on. One point, but this paper says 1.7 million uh, families to benefit. All right, now, court okays building on Saraki's uh, disputed Ilorin land. Naira Mali arranged for flouting COVID-19 protocols. That story is on page five, and the other is on page 36, uh, the one on Saraki. And then we have federal government extends curfew for four weeks. Um, we have gunmen killed 21 in Kaduna villages. Uh, different figures, imagine. The other paper says 33, now we have 21. But the truth is that people are being killed in southern Kaduna. That story is on the front page, but it's continued on page 26 as well. The House of Assembly, House of Assembly crisis throws Edo into tumult. That story is on page six of the Nation newspaper. Um, I think the only we've almost talked about. Okay, we've I was just to say that we've talked about almost everything on this paper. We have uh, picture stories. I believe that's from the supposed swearing in, and then we have the picture story of uh, the renovation site. Uh, 17 lawmakers to take over, in quotes, after sacking speaker and the deputy. Lawmakers meet with the police chief in, um, in, as INEC warns against violence. Heaps of sand dumped to commence 
so-called renovation again in quotes of complex. You can see uh, that for yourself. Presidency, revolution now protests unnecessary, according to the presidency on page five. And the defense headquarters disagrees with US on ISIS. It's on page five also. And we have the names of, uh, you know, the pro Abaseki lawmakers listed, well listed out. You can grab a copy of the newspaper and then uh, read and find out who they are for yourself. Aisha, very quickly, uh, what's your thoughts oh. on this? Oh. Okay, so this last one we're about the defense headquarters. So the first thing I'm thinking about, they, they are aware and at the same time again they disagree. Uh, so where are we or on, on that one? We, what is it? Is it they agree on or not? And then quickly I will say the president that said the revolution that protest is unnecessary. Is it their is it their protest? Is it their necessary? Let them allow the people to do what they want to do. If they want to come out and be walking on the street and say and, and talk against what they don't like, let them do it. What is so long as it's democratic. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it, we're in a democracy and they have a right to it. It's constitutional what they're doing. And it, it's government that, that did what is unconstitutional. They don't have a right to arrest them. Up to now, we have some people in Mechongo that have been arrested. I think about four or five of them who are still under a local key at the DSS, uh, SSS uh, headquarters. And, and they should be released. And that, that's, all, that's what we're we are talking about. And we must insist on that. I will also say that the uh, those state uh, uh, state of assembly members they were not voted into office for them to do pro Obaseki and anti Obaseki, and they should get uh, to work. The issue, the top one that we didn't talk about is Neramadi that arrayed uh, for flouting uh, COVID nineteen protocol. Anybody who breaks the law must be uh, must face the consequences of breaking the law. But at the same time, the politicians also who are flouting the protocol, they also must be brought to book. You can't bring other citizens and then you leave politicians who are supposed to live by example. They flout these rules, they behave anyhow, they do all sorts of things, and nobody says anything to them, and it's only citizens that are being arrayed. What is good for the uh, for the office for should equally uh, be good uh, for Uganda. Uh, for the Ganda. And I, for me, at uh, uh, the Lagos issue, I hope, please, 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 let it strictly be followed, the COVID-19 rules. Life, lives must be protected mm. in as much as we want to, we want to worship. All right. Aisha, thank you very much. I know that there is one that you're uh, excited about, um, most of you, I mean, who are stranded, which is the, the international flights uh, would soon yes. resume. Uh, you didn't get the chance to talk about that, but I mean, before we came on air, we already talked about it. So, yeah. Yes. We hope. I can't wait. I can't wait to come back home. <laughs> we hope um, that that happens. <laughs> Oh, I'm always to be a Niger person. I can't wait to be back home. All right. Let's see. So that we can do the unnecessary protest that the government is talking about. <laughs> All right, Aisha. We can't wait to have you back and maybe have you physically also in the studio. Thank you so very much for your thoughts and keep safe, Aisha, Thank out you. there. All right. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Thank you. And that's how we wrap it on Off the Press. Remember, it is 8.30, uh, Monday to Friday, here on Plus TV Africa. We try to make sense of what is in our national dailies and have a conversation, hoping for the best for our country. My name is Amaka Okui.